want to step into a new season. And I believe the new season is a winning season. And I'm going to go further than I did last year. Come on, somebody. And I'm going to walk in, I'm going to walk in deeper dimensions of my destiny. I'm going to walk further in my purpose. God has a call on my life. God has a call on your life. You are a chosen generation. He chose you. He put you on earth for a specific purpose. You're not here just to exist or occupy space. here at Rescue Church. We believe we're here to reach and rescue people with the love of God. If you ever have any questions or you want to know more about us, go to rescuechurch.org and we'd love for you to stay connected by downloading the Rescue Church app. And also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you get notified anytime we post something new. Well, with that being said, here's this week's newest message. Amen, amen. I want you to give your neighbor a high five and say, hey, God has new beginnings for you. Say, God's got new beginnings for you. Come on, somebody. Y'all can be seated. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of y'all really, how many of y'all came expecting? I said, how many of y'all came expecting? How many of y'all came expecting? Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. Amen. How many of y'all really believe this is my year? Come on. Tell the person next to you that you didn't talk to. Say, this is my year. Come on, come on. How many guys know we've got to declare it and wear it? Come on, somebody. 
Come on, we got to declare it and wear it every single day. How many guys know church isn't just something we do on Sunday? Come on, this is my year. Come on, not only to come to church, but to be the church 24-7. Come on, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is my year, this is my year. I believe it's a year of new beginnings for each and every one of us, amen. Well, guys, I'm going to do my best to uh, preach and teach what God's put on my heart. But I, I've got to be really, really uh, transparent and honest with you guys. After that, that worship, man, I don't know, man. I'm telling you, I just, I'm so fired up. I just feel like we just need to keep worshiping. I'm telling you, amen. I'm just telling you. It was that good. It's that good. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's just one of those things where, where God just, sometimes God just knows exactly where the temperature needs to be in the room you know it wasn't too hot but it wasn't too cold it was just right are y'all hearing me and there's times where God just knows how to put the temperature just right because he knows how many guys know he knows our hearts better better than than honestly sometimes we even know ourselves because he's the one who created us what I'm trying to say is he knows what you need even when you don't know you need it can I get an amen his ways are not our ways his thoughts are not our thoughts come on somebody and I really, feel, I really feel like God put the temperature right where it needed to be to capture the majority of the hearts in the room. And I don't know about you, I believe in new beginnings, and I believe God has new things and great things in store for each and every one of us. Can I get an amen? Well, how many of y'all are really, really, really expecting 2019 to be better than 2018? I really am. I'm, I'm really believing that 2019 is going to be better than uh, 2018. I, I really believe that this is this is my year. This is my year. I believe this. And some of y'all need to declare this every day, every morning you get up, every morning you get up. Because I believe it starts out with saying it, but how many guys know sooner or later we're going to seize it? Amen. We're going to walk in it. We're going to talk it, but then we're going to walk in it. And I really, I really believe, I believe this is my year to see God do greater things in, in my finances, greater things in my marriage, greater things in our church, greater things in me. Come on. It's going to be a new me. How many of y'all ready for a new you? Tell the person next to you, say, hey, there's going to be a new me in 2019. New me in 2019. New me in 2019. I really believe that. I really believe that. See, the new year, the new year really, to me, it really is a new season to experience new beginnings. Um, it's a season to experience a new start. How many of y'all are grateful for a new start? It's a season to experience new opportunities, new habits, a new mindset. Whew. Boy, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for that. A new heart. Come on, we need to get rid of the Grinch. Come on, somebody. I, I really, I'll be really honest with you. I, I've really actually had to go, gone into some serious prayer about this. Because when we were in that Grinch series, I was talking to the Lord. I said, man, there really are a lot of Grinches in the church. And I, I was like, Lord, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that, that you can set people free from that. And you can give us a new heart. Come on, somebody. A heart for you. Come on, somebody. A heart for people. Ooh, I'm going to be talking to you about that in this series. It's going to be good. So, so the, the new year really is a new season to experience new beginnings. It's, it's a season to experience new priorities, new ideas, new goals, new vision, new resolutions. And I believe new beginnings doing things God's way. Did y'all catch that? I believe new beginnings doing things God's way. Somebody say God's way. That means that I have to, I have to walk in His ways, not my ways. Come on, somebody. If I, I, want new, I, want, I want new beginnings God's way. That, that means I have to give him more of me so I can receive more of him. That means I have to draw closer to God and not, how many of you guys know, and I believe if I draw closer to God, he will draw closer to me. And I mean, that means I have to pursue his will for my life, not my will for my life. Come on, somebody. These are just good reminders. I think we all need to hear at the beginning of the new year. And, and the most important thing is, more, most important thing is that is that I I have to I have to live for less of me and more of Him. If I want to experience if I want to experience the new things God wants to do in me and through me in 2019. Amen. And so I believe in new beginnings, but I believe these new beginnings we have to do them God's way. God's way. God's way. God's way. Not my way. Not your way, but God's way. Amen. God's way. 
And so, and so I want to share with you a scripture that I like to, to share at the beginning of the year. I just think it's, it's one of the scriptures that you probably need to print, put on the refrigerator. Uh, you need to keep it on your phone. Um, you, need to, you need to look at it every single day. And it's Isaiah 43, uh, 18 through 19. And I love what it says. It says this, um, God speaking to the prophet. He says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Now, we're going to get into that, but not today, because how many of you guys know newness only comes by letting go of the past and pressing on into the future that God has in store for you? But forgetting the former things, do not dwell on the past. Verse 19, see. How many of you guys know we've got to see it? I just shared that. If you're going to seize it, you've got to see it. Tell the person next to you, you've got to see it. He said, see, I'm doing a new thing. See, I'm doing it. How many guys know you've got to see it by faith before you you see it manifest in your life? Tell the person next to you, I can see it. I can see, I can see, I can see God doing a new thing. It hasn't come to pass yet, but I can see it. I know God is about to do a new thing in my marriage. He's going to do a new thing in my finances. He's going to do a new thing in my church. He's going to do a new thing in my kids. He's going to do a new thing in me. Tell the person next to you, you got to see it. You got to see it. You got to see it. I love what he said. We got to see it. I'm doing a new thing. We got to see it by faith. Amen. So he says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Exclamation point. That's why I got excited. Amen. Now it springs up. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? How many of y'all perceive it? How many of y'all feel like that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and there's something stirring up on the inside of you? It's springing up inside of you and you're perceiving, you're perceiving something big is about to happen. You're perceiving God is about to do a new thing in your life. How many of y'all perceive it? You got to perceive it. Because if you perceive it, you can receive it. Did y'all catch that? Come on, somebody. Because if you can perceive it, you can receive it. Amen. Come on. We have to see it with the eyes of faith. We've got to see it with the eyes of faith. But how many of you guys know we've got to perceive it? It's stirring up on the inside. It's stirring up on the inside. That means God's about to do a new thing in you and through you so you can step into the new thing that he has in store for you in 2019. I'm teaching right now. Are y'all getting this? That's good stuff. Hallelujah. I perceive it. I perceive it. Mm -mm -mm. He said, do you not perceive it? Question. He said, I am making a way in the wilderness and the streams in the wasteland. And in the streams in the wasteland. I'm making a way. How many of you guys believe he's your way maker? How many of y'all believe he's your way maker? I can get a whole lot of amens up in here. I'm telling you, it's a new year. Tell the person next to you, happy new year. But God is doing a new thing in me. Come on, you got to believe it. You got to perceive it. You got to see it. You got to say it. Amen. Come on, somebody. God is our way maker. He will make a way. He will make a way. You, you Listen to me. If God says he will make a way, he just said it right there. I didn't, I didn't say it. That's in the word. He said, I, I will make a way. I will make a way. I believe God will make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way. But you've got to believe that God's going to make the way. I can't tell you how that impact building is going to get built this year, but I just know God's going to make a way. That's going to be a new thing. I said that's going to be a new thing. It's going to be a new building. It's going to be a new thing, and there's going to be new beginnings that are going to happen in that building with these children. Can I get an amen? Come on, somebody. He's going to do a new thing. Now, you remember you remember Joshua, when I talked to you guys about Joshua and Joshua, how many of you guys know they came to the Jordan and they had to cross over? They had to cross over the Jordan before they entered into the promised land and I believe there's some promises that God has for this church and some promises God has for your life that you're going to enter into in 2019 but you're going to have to cross over and part of crossing over if you remember the priest came and they stood in the middle of the river and the Bible says they collected 12 stones 12 stones and and, and how many guys know that everybody crossed everybody crossed but listen to me they stood in the middle and the Bible says when they stood in the middle that's that is representing we have to stand in faith can I get an amen if we stand in faith, if we will stand in faith, then it says they, they, they built an altar. They put an altar with those 12 stones. And how many of you guys know when they crossed over, it says this will be a, a memorial to, to the next generation. And I'm letting you know if we will stand in faith and if we will cross over 
and we will do what God has called us to do, listen to me, it will be a memorial to the next generation, meaning the next generation, they're going to see that God truly can do a new thing inside of you and cause you to enter into the promised land, into the promises that God has for your life. Did y'all catch that? Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Amen. And so I'm, I'm, I'm so ready for God to do a new thing. And I believe God's promises are going to come to pass in my life in 2019. The things that God has spoken to me, those new things that God has prepared for me. Amen. So this morning, this morning, I'm just going to have fun with this. This morning, I, I would like to share with you on the subject of y'all get this new year, new season. New year, new season. Tell the person next to you it's a new season. Come on, come on. It's a new season. There's new beginnings in this new season. Tell the person one more time. It's a new year. It's a new season. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of y'all guys know when we, when we, ste- when we step into to 2019 as a transition, we are stepping in to a new year, but we're also stepping into a new season. I believe God has a new season for this church. God has a new season for your life. I believe God is going to do new things in the new season. And we're going to experience a newness and we're going to experience new beginnings. Amen. And so, I I, I don't know. I'm just going to start off with declaring what what, what God stirred up in my heart. And and, and, and part of the reason that, listen to me, we we, we worshiped to this song. I believe with all my heart this is my year. And I believe it's your year to experience a winning season. Did y'all hear that song? It said, this is our winning season. I said, this is our winning season. I don't know why nobody's not getting excited about that. It gets me excited. I said, this is our winning season. It's my winning season. How many of y'all believe it's your winning season? It's my winning season. And I know some of the the, the religious and theological people in the room and the scholars who in this room are, are thinking, well, it's always a winning season with Jesus. I agree. It's always a winning season in Christ Jesus because no matter what happens to you, you always win. But there are, there are times in life where you experience losses. Are y'all hearing me? There are times you experience setbacks. There are times you experience pushbacks. Are y'all hearing me? But I'm letting you know, I'm letting you know those are only for a season. But I believe this is our winning season. It's a new season and it's our winning season. And listen to me, all those setbacks that the enemy tried to push you back, I believe God is about to give you the comeback and you're going to move forward, you're going to press on and you're going to advance down the field and you're going to score a touchdown for Jesus. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. It's my winning season. I don't know about you, but it's my winning season. I said the devil is a liar. I said it's my winning season. Hallelujah. Y'all got to love me. I just feel like preaching up in here. And I may scream a little bit, but I'm excited because I really believe it. I said I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I do. I believe we're all winners in Christ Jesus. I do. I do. But there are some seasons where you experience losses, but this is going to be a season of gain. Come on, somebody. No, listen to me, no more losses. I'm telling you, nothing but wins. It's a new season. It's a new season. Tell the person next to you, it's a new season. I believe we're going to experience more and more wins this year. I believe we're going to experience more wins this year. I mean, y'all got to get on board with me. I'm not just talking about me. I'm talking about the church. I believe that if you are a Christian, you are the church. There's going to be more wins in 2019. Amen. Tell your neighbor one more time, it's your winning season. Remember I shared with you, we've got to declare it and wear it. Amen. It's, it's my winning season. It's my winning season. And I never knew, Jackie, you could sing like that girl. You was belting out there. Whoa. Woo! That's some good stuff. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's her winning season. Amen. Amen. I believe it. I really believe it. I believe it's our winning season. It's a new season. It's going to be our winning season. I believe it's your season to see victory in your finances, your relationship, and your health. Come on. Somebody declare this with me. and Say amen. So be it. Come on, it's your season to see God dreams and visions come to pass. Come on, how many are expecting? How many are expecting? How many are expecting to see God dreams and visions come to pass? 
I believe it's your season to see God's favor cause you to walk in greater dimensions of your destiny and purpose. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I don't want to be who I was last year. I want to be a new me. I want to step into a new season. And I believe the new season is a winning season. And I'm going to go further than I did last year. Come on, somebody. And I'm going to walk in, I'm going to walk in deeper dimensions of my destiny. I'm going to walk further in my purpose. God has a call on my life. God has a call on your life. You are a chosen generation. He chose you. He put you on earth for a specific purpose. You're not here just to exist or occupy space. You're here for a purpose, and it's a God-given purpose. You've got a destiny to fulfill. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God has called you to be a kingdom builder. Come on. A history maker and a difference maker here on earth. And I believe it's a winning season for each and every one of us to step into the very thing, the very thing any of the enemy tries to stop us from entering into. But this is our winning season. This is our winning season. The devil can't hold me back. I said, the devil can't hold me back. Tell your neighbor, the devil can't hold you back because it's your winning season. It's my winning season. It's my winning season. I believe it's your season to see God elevate your life and cause your enemies to bless you. I said, I said, this year, listen, they're just not getting out of the way. They're going to bless you. They're just not getting out of the way. God's just not going to be your defender. He's going to cause them to bless you. You've got to expect it. Come on, somebody. It's my winning season. All them haters hating on me, they about to bless me. They're going to bless me big in 2019. You can say what you want, think what you want, but I know God is about to do a new thing in a new season, and this is my winning season. This is my year. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. I believe it's your season. It's your season to see the super, listen to me, to see supernatural increase and accelerated spiritual growth. I said supernatural increase and accelerated growth. You said, Pastor, where did you get these things when I went into prayer? When I went into prayer, writing these things, these things just start popping down. I start writing them down. God started speaking to me. He said, these, these things. I'm like, most people have one word. God gave me more than one word. The, the, the big word he gave me is accelerated growth. That was the, the, the biggest thing God showed me. Is there'll be accelerated growth in 2019. God told me that. Accelerated. That's, listen, that's something only the hand of God can do. That's something only favor can do. Are y'all hearing me? Only favor, only favor can, can do that. That's what we call supernatural increase. Come on, are y'all hearing me? How, how many how many are expecting supernatural increase? Come on, you've got to expect it. You've got to perceive it, to receive it. Amen, I'm telling you. And listen to me, it's, it's your season. It's your season to see breakthrough and new beginnings. It, it's your season to see breakthrough and new beginnings. Maybe you didn't see the breakthrough that you wanted to see in 2018, but I'm telling you, this, this is your winning season. It's your winning season. You're going to see breakthrough. You're going. Some of y'all got some breakthrough, but I'm telling you, this year, listen to me, listen to me. You're, you're going to see. You're going to see God move, and you're going to see breakthrough. You're going to see breakthrough in areas you've been praying about that you haven't seen it come to pass yet, but it will come to pass in 2019 because it is your season. It is your winning season. I'm telling you, it's your season to see it happen. Amen. I believe it. How many of y'all got? Y'all got to believe this with me. Come on, how many of y'all got a little faith being stirred up inside? I'm preaching it to you because I'm trying to stir you up. I'm trying to fire you up. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to let you know that God is on your side. And God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above more than we could ever ask. Think or imagine according to the power. That's Holy Ghost power. That works in us. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, this is my year. It's a new year. It's a new season. Y'all, y'all got to love me because this is one of those messages that I just, I'm having fun. I'm having fun because I believe this. I believe this stuff. This, this, is, this isn't just a sermon I downloaded from the internet. This is a sermon I downloaded from heaven. Come on, are y'all hearing me? This is things God has spoke to me when I went into my prayer closet. 
And God has, God has put it on my heart to share with you. And listen to me, I believe if you'll catch it, if you'll catch it, how many guys know you'll run with it and you'll see it come to pass? Amen. Tell the person next to you, it's your winning season. It's your winning season. Let me, let me, get, it, let me get to where I need to go. If I don't finish this, it's going to be all right. Amen. Watch this. Number one. Number one. This is so good. It's so good. Remember, new year, new season. Mm. Watch this. And this is so fitting, so fitting with where we're at, with where we're at this new year. Watch this. Starting the new year with fasting and prayer is a physical act of obedience that causes a new season of spiritual renewal. Did y'all catch that? y'all a chance to put on the screen. Y'all got that? Look, listen, starting the new year with fasting and prayer. I stress that word prayer. I'm going to get there in a moment. Starting the new year with fasting and prayer is a physical act of obedience that causes a new season of spiritual renewal. Amen. Amen. How many of you guys know that's, that's, what, that's what fasting is? It, it is. It's, it's a physical act of obedience. Are y'all hearing me? Now, physical act of obedience will we'll, we'll give you wins in life. They're always going to give you in li- wins in life because how many guys know God rewards our obedience? So how many guys know it's going to be a winning season when you're fasting and you're praying? Amen. This is good stuff. I, I'm going to get more into that in a moment, but let me just let me just go with what God put on my heart. So watch this, watch this. We must remember, we must remember, listen to me, that fasting and prayer must go hand in hand. I know this is, this is new to some of y'all in the room, so I, I want to I wanna slow back down just for a moment because I want to make sure everybody captures this. Everybody captures this. Listen to me. You got to remember. You got to remember that fasting and prayer must go hand in hand. I know there's a lot of new people in the room that don't know that. Now watch. I'm going to share this quote with you real quick before I get into it. Y'all put that quote on the screen. I love this quote. And it says this. It says, unless you put prayer with your fasting, there's no need to fast. If it doesn't mean anything to you, it won't mean anything to God. That's a good quote right there. So, so also I want to say this. Also want to say we don't fast and pray to give God more of our problems. We fast and pray to give God more of us. Are y'all hearing me? And just quickly, I've got to touch on this, but I'm only hit it quick. Listen, to me, I, I've got to also bring clarity to this too because it's it's amazing how so many people, so many people, because of not to be me, because of some bad teaching in the past. But I want you to. Fasting and prayer doesn't mean you can manipulate God. Just because you fast, I'm going to manipulate God. I'm going to demand God. I'm going to make God. Really, I would never want to do that to the Lord. Demanding God to do something, listen to me, is not a safe place to be in. But to remind him of what he says in his word is okay. I didn't get a whole lot of clapping on that. Can I get an amen? So be careful with that. Be careful because some bad teaching in there. Listen to me, I want to bring clarity to that. Because I've seen a lot of those people demand and they never saw anything come to pass. But listen to me, if you remind them of his word, it's, it, it touches the heart of God. Because listen to me, you're not doing it for things, you're doing it because you know him, because you know the word, you know him. And because you know the word, how many of it causes the heart of God and his hand of God begin to move in your life? I've shared that before. I just got to bring clarity to that real quick. But remember, remember, when we fast or pray, it's not to give God of our problem, uh, more of our problems, it's to give God more of us. How many of you guys know that's what God really wants? during fasting and prayer. So watch this. Remember, remember fasting and prayer must go hand in hand. Watch this. Prayer, prayer is connecting with God and fasting is disconnecting from the world. Oh, God. Come on, so write this stuff down. This is good stuff. I'm going to go slow for a moment. Prayer is connecting with God and fasting is disconnecting from the world. Prayer is tuning into the spirit of God and fasting is tuning out the flesh. Did y'all get that? It's good stuff. Prayer is tuning into the Spirit of God and fasting is tuning out the flesh. That's why they must go hand in hand. Listen to me. Prayer is getting online with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and fasting is getting offline with me, myself, and I. Come on, did y'all catch that? Come on, it's good stuff right there. Watch this. And the last one, watch this. These are examples. Prayer, prayer is a key that unlocks God's potential in your life. And fasting is a short season that releases long-term spiritual results. That is powerful right there. Can I get an amen? Come on. Remember, remember, fasting and prayer must go hand in hand. I don't know what you've been taught, but I'm bringing clarity to it. I'm telling you what the Word says. When Jesus fasted, he also prayed. He's our example, so we should follow him. 
You'll find where Moses fasted. You're going to find where Elijah, Elijah fasted. Elijah fasted. You're, you're going to find where the Apostle Paul fasted often. He said, we, uh, we, I'll share that in a moment, where they fasted. And Jesus fasted. How many guys know that means we should fast, but they also prayed. So fasting and prayer must go hand in hand. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. Now watch this. Let me, y'all, let me give you a, 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 share with you what biblical fasting is. Biblical fasting is voluntarily, watch this, going without food in order to focus on prayer and fellowship with God. That's Pastor Paul's definition, but it is biblical. It's, 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 it's in there. If you go there, you look at the Strong's. Biblical fasting is voluntarily going without food. You've got to volunteer. How many of you guys know voluntarily means you're willing to sacrifice the food so you can better connect with God? Come on, somebody. I know y'all taking notes. But just, just, just amen with me one time. Somebody say amen. Thank you. Thank you. So it's, it's voluntary, sacrifice, sacrifice. That's why I love fasting, fasting, because listen to me, we, we live, love me, we live in a generation and there's a culture today where everything, everybody wants fast, fast. How many of you guys know not fasting, but they want fast. They, we want to go through drive through We got to want to get our meal fast. And, and here's a sad thing. A lot of people want, want a fast meal. They walk into a restaurant. They want quick service. They want it fast. And how many of you guys know the sad thing is we come into church and we want a quick service. But when we come into church, we shouldn't want a quick service. We should want everything God wants to download and feed us with. I'm preaching real good right now up in here. Amen. People are trying to tell you how, 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 how quick God can move. Are you kidding me? Really? I, I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody can tell God how to do it. And if you tell how, how God how to do it, I think he'll take his hand off and let you do it. Because that's not humility. Are y'all hearing me? Grace comes to the humble. Did y'all hear me? Grace comes to the humble. Are y'all hearing me? Just to back it up with the scripture. Amen. So, so listen, to me. biblical fasting is voluntary going without food. Now I'm going to stress the word food. Y'all got to have to love me. I'm, I'm, I know we got communion today, but you got to love me. I got to teach this right. Uh, without going without food. The word fast in the Bible actually means to cover, cover your mouth so you, you abstain. It means the word abstain from food. Now, I know a lot of you guys may abstain from the internet, television, things like that, and that's a good thing if you're spending more time with God. But ultimately, if you want to get technical, really, you have to abstain from food. If we're going to get biblically technical, biblically technical, just, just sharing that with you. I feel like I, I, I need to share that with you. So watch this. So remember, it's voluntary going without food in order to focus on prayer and fellowship with God. In other words, fasting fasting allows us to set aside time for prayer and spiritual renewal did y'all get that spiritual renewal because remember what the point is starting the new year with fasting and prayer is a physical act of obedience it causes a new season a new season of spiritual renew and i don't know about you listen to me i believe this is a winning season and i want to see god i want to see god download some things in me because if i get the win on the inside then i'm gonna have the win on the outside and, and tell your neighbor it starts with me it's, it does this. It starts with you and Jesus. If you want to see revival, if you want to see re- revival happen. Listen, revival has to happen with you first. It's amazing how people walk into church and they want to see revival, and they'll tell the preacher to stir up some revival. I can't stir revival, but I can have revival in me. And if revival gets in you and gets to the next person, how many guys know then we're gonna have some revival? Amen. I get into some stuff. Amen. And I believe, I believe, I believe, if we get the win on the inside, then we're gonna have the win on the outside we're going to have a winning season. Tell the person next to you, it's my season. It's my winning season. Amen. Watch this. Now watch this. Now, let me share this with you. If, if the early church fasted and prayed, then we should fast and pray. Just for the person in here who might want to know a New Testament scripture on this. Watch Acts 14, 23. It says this. It says Paul and Barnabas. you got to realize the, he's the apostle. He's an apostle of Paul. He's the apostle Paul. And you got to remember in Ephesians 5, the Bible talks about there's a five-fold ministry. There's apostles, there's, there's prophets, there's evangelists, there's teachers, and there's pastors. And so what they are, the apostle Paul is, he's basically planting churches. And all of a sudden, says, Paul and Barnabas also appointed what? Elders. They're appointing elders in every church. Because they just, they just the, the church is growing, it's thriving. They planted some churches and they appointed uh, elders in every church. He said, he said, with prayer and fasting, 
Did y'all catch that? With prayer and fasting, they turned the elders over to the, to the uh, care of the Lord in whom they had put their trust. And so they were praying. How many guys know elders will pray for a pastor? The elders will pray for the fivefold ministry. But how many guys know as pastors, as apostles, as, as evangelists, as, as teachers, and as, as a pastor? Must, how many guys know we should also be praying for our elders? That's why Becky came up and said, we're going to pray for Miss Major because she's an elder in the church. And we're going to put, them in, put her in the care and the trust of the Lord. Come on, somebody. So during, during this, is the awesome, this is the awesome season. Dude, listen to me. I believe we should pray and fast. And during our fasting, how many guys know we should pray and lift her up to Jesus? Amen. Let's throw that in there. It's a, it's a good, good, just a good place to put it in there. Good side note. Watch. Matthew 4, 1 through 2. Now watch this. If, if fasting and prayer was a big part, a big part of Jesus' life, it shouldn't be a small part of your life. That's good right there. Watch. Matthew 4, 1 through 2. It says this. It says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Now, the, 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 I, I could get into the scripture, but what I want to point out is, is this. If Jesus fasted and prayed to get a spiritual renewal, then we should too. Can I get an amen? He was hungry because how many guys know he was God in the flesh? Are y'all hearing me? He was God in the flesh. And so his flesh was hungry. But how many guys know he was strong because he had a spiritual renewal? When he fasted and prayed, he was talking to the Father, had fellowship with the Father. Are y'all hearing me? So if Jesus did that, how much more should you and I? Are y'all catching this? I'm backing it up. I'm backing it up. Come on, this is good stuff. So watch this. Remember, remember, prayer and fasting is a physical act of obedience that causes, that causes a new season of spiritual renewal. How many of y'all ready for a new season of spiritual renewal? How many of y'all really ready for a new season of spiritual renewal? I want, a, I want a new season of spiritual renewal inside of me. Amen. And then, then that's how many guys, that's why we start off the year with fasting and prayer in this church corporately. Amen. I ask you to join in. And I think you should. It's powerful. It's so a remember, prayer and fasting is a physical act of obedience that causes a new season of spiritual renewal. Meaning, watch this. Meaning this. When you fast and pray, watch this. It promotes physical and spiritual healing. Y'all taking notes? It's on the screen. When you fast and pray, it promotes physical and spiritual healing. When you fast and pray, it helps you focus more on Jesus. When you fast and pray, it releases a spiritual thirst and hunger for more of God and the things that he has prepared for you. I don't know about you. I'm hungry. I am thirsty. I'm so hungry and thirsty. And I am excited. I am excited. And I am anticipating. And I am expecting that that I will see the things that God has prepared for me to come to pass in my life and in your life in 2019. I'm hungry for it. Is anybody hungry? I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Why? Because when we fast, how many guys know we kill the flesh? And it gives us an awareness of what the Spirit of God wants to, to do in our lives. Amen. So watch this, watch this. When you fast and pray, watch this. It makes you more sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit and better connects you with Jesus. When you fast and pray, it, it revives your spirit to better serve God's kingdom. Are y'all hearing me? It revives, it revives your spirit to better serve God's kingdom. When you fast and pray, not just when you fast when you fast and pray it creates it creates how many guys know it creates a passion in you to live for God and share Jesus with others hallelujah hallelujah when you fast and pray when you when you fast and pray when the the the, the praying and the fasting at the 21 day fast when the 21 day fast is over listen to me you ought to feel closer to Jesus than you've ever been before I said, you ought to feel closer to Jesus than you've ever been before. Why? Because you fasted. You fasted so you could spend more time with your Lord, your Savior, and your King. I fasted so I could, so I could get closer to Him, not further away from Him. Are y'all hearing me? So when I, when I fast and pray, I come out. My flesh, my flesh may be weak, but my spirit is strong. 
I said my flesh may be weak, but my spirit is strong. Now, there, there may be some physical healing that takes place because I fasted, but the most important thing is there's a spiritual healing that took place in my life while I fasted. And God did something inside of me that no doctor can do, that no man can do. Are y'all hearing me? That no book could do, that no television show could do, but only something God can do inside of me. And he, and he, and he healed and he touched and he stirred up something inside of me that nothing, nothing could ignite a fire in me like Jesus and it, it stirred something and there's a fire in me to want to want to live for God to pursue God to, to walk into my calling to walk into my destiny to do the things that I know God is prepared to call me to do on earth all of a sudden I'm not just thinking temporal but I'm thinking eternal are y'all hearing me come on somebody all of a sudden I, I find myself no longer worrying but I'm worshiping I'm no longer praising the problem but I'm praising the answer Come on, are y'all hearing me? I'm talking to somebody up in here. Why? Because I know it's my winning season. I may not, I may not, I may not see it in the natural realm, but I see it with the eyes of faith. And I know that God is about to do a new thing in my life. And I believe the new thing that He has in store for me and you. How many of you guys know it's going to be something that no devil in hell can stop? I don't believe man can stop it. I believe we're going to overcome and we're going to see God do a new thing. But it starts with what he has to do inside of you. Come on, somebody. It starts on the inside before you see it on the outside. Amen. Watch this. Number two. I've got to move quickly. Number two, watch this. Fasting of prayer, watch this, will renew your spirit and position you for a new season of victory. God, that's so good. Fasting and prayer will renew your spirit and position you for a new season of victory. Tell your neighbor, it's my winning season. Whew. I'm going to start it up one more time. Tell your neighbor, it's, it's my winning season. Come on, I believe it's my winning season. I, I believe, listen to me, hear me, hear me on this. I believe it's a winning season if you focus more on him and less on you. I believe it's a winning season when you stop living for you and you start living for him. I believe it's a winning season when you, if you draw closer to him than further away from him. Come on, somebody. And I believe, I believe with all my heart, fasting and prayer will position you for a winning season. For a winning season. I, I, I may get hit. I may get attacked. But listen, if it, if it drew me closer to Jesus and it made me want more of him and less of the world and less of me, how many guys know it's a winning season? Can I get an Amen. It's a winning season. Why? Because fair and pressing will renew your spirit and position you for a new season of victory. It's going to do that. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. I'm going to show you this. We're going to read, we're going to read um, where Daniel, I've shared the scripture with some of y'all before. It, it, it's in Daniel, and this is where he fasted and prayed. He fasted and prayed, listen to me, for three weeks. That's 21 days. That's why we do a 21-day fast. He, he, he fasted for 21 days. It's three weeks. And let's read Daniel 10, verses 2 through 3. And it says this. It says, when the vision came to me, I, Daniel, had been in mourning for three whole weeks. He said, all that time I had eaten no rich food, no meat, no wine, crossed my lips, and I used no fragrant lotions until those three weeks had passed. That's some serious fasting right there. That's serious fasting. He's fasting. So it's amazing because you got to capture this. Daniel, Daniel needed help and insight about his future. So what did he do? He began to fast and pray. That's what happened. He began to fast and pray. Now, I'm going to jump down to Daniel. Um, I'm going to go down to verse Daniel 10, verse 12 through 14. Because what happens is while he's fasting and praying, all of a sudden, an angel, an angel touches him. And he says this. Isn't this powerful? He fasted and prayed. How many guys know heaven heard and heaven moves? This is powerful, man. An angel, an angel. Now, you've got to remember, let me just point this out real quickly because I'm trying to watch my time, and I, and I don't want to speed preach. You guys will have to slow it down, you know, but let me, let, let me just tell you this real quickly. Watch this. How many of you guys know when Jesus uh, fasted and prayed, the, the enemy tempted him. The enemy tempted Jesus, but this is powerful. After he got through tempting him, G Jesus just, poo, he just quoted the word. Boom, boom, boom. Man, there was nothing the devil could do. How many of you guys know when you speak the word, there's nothing the devil can do about it? He just spoke to where he spoke to boom, boom, boom. But then the, the Bible says, the Bible says that the, the devil left him. The enemy left. And when the enemy left, angels came and ministered to Jesus. 
Daniel's fasting and praying, and listen to me. And now an angel comes, and angels come, and they minister to Daniel. And listen to me, angels will not only minister to you, but they will give you the victory. They will give you the win. Because listen to me, there, there ain't no force on earth that can stop the force of heaven when it's moving on your side. Can I get an amen? Come on, it's good stuff right there. Watch this. This is powerful. This is powerful. So listen to me, when you fast and pray, you, you should, you should have some God encounters. Are y'all hearing me? I said, when you fast and pray, you should have some God encounters. Does anybody want a God encounter? Am I the only one? What are we doing up in here in church? Does anybody want a God encounter? Listen to me, fasting your prayer, listen to me, it sets you up, it positions you for a God encounter. And when you have a God encounter, you're always going to get a victory. Man, that's good stuff right there, boy. That's good preaching right there. So watch this. So watch this. Now all of a sudden the angel touches him and he says this in Daniel. We're going to go to verse 12. Daniel 10, verse 12 through 14. Then he said, what did he tell him? Don't be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day you begin to pray for understanding, he prayed for understanding. How many guys know this is our year to get some new direction? Come on, so get some new understanding. The first day you begin to pray for understanding and to humble, there it is, he humbled himself, and to humble yourself before God. That's powerful. It's powerful. This, I'm telling you, it's a year where we've got to just humble ourselves before God. You humble yourself before God. Your request has what been heard in heaven. So I've come in in answer to your prayer. This is powerful. So, so, so I want y'all to capture this. I want y'all to capture this. He's praying, he's fasting, right? He's praying, he's fasting. And, and I think I got time. Chris, come up here. I want to just show this illustration real quick. Just real quickly. Real quickly. I want, I want to show something. Matter of fact, stand on the side over here. Stand on the side. He's, he's praying and he's, and, he's, and he's fasting, right? And, uh, and he's been praying and fasting for 21 days. And then how many guys with the Bible says that the first day he began to pray, heaven already heard. Are y'all hearing me? It already heard. And heaven heard. And so, and so I want to show you this illustration. I want to show you this. It's so powerful just in this text right here. So what does Daniel do? The first thing Daniel does, is he, 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 he needs some insight about his future. He needs some insight. How many guys know if we want to know something about our future, we should always go to heaven? Are y'all hearing me? And how many guys know heaven wants to speak to us about the things God has prepared for us? So many people just live through life, case or all, whatever will be, will be. Why? Why wouldn't you want to talk to God, have an encounter with God, and let God speak to you about what he has prepared for you in your future? That's vision. How many of y'all want some new vision? Am I the only one? How many of y'all want some new vision? So, so Daniel, Daniel needs some insight. He needs to hear from heaven on this. And I love what he does. I love what he does. What he does, and, and, and capture these three points I have for you, these three points. Number one, number one is this. Is Fasting will always point your life in the right direction. Fasting will always point your life in the right direction. Why? Because what does it do? Fasting pulls you away. Fasting pulls you away from the distractions. Fasting pulls you away from distractions. Distractions of the world, your job, whatever. Fasting pulls you away from distractions. And fasting points your life in the right direction. What did Daniel do? Daniel came and he began to pray. So you're praying, Chris. You're praying. So what did I do? I pulled I pulled Chris out of here. I brought him over here. I want him to get away from all you distracting people. Just kidding. And so, he came, so what did he do? He began to fast pray. So he was pulled away from the distractions. What does he do? He he begins to pray. How many guys know he's not focused on, on what his circumstances? He's not focused on. He's focusing on Jesus. Remember, prayer and fasting gets you focused on God. And so he's looking up. Look up. Look up. Look up. There we go. You're doing a great job, Andy. So, so fasting points your life in the right direction. How many guys, when you fast and pray, you should always get heavenly direction, divine direction? And so what else does it do? Fasting does this. Fasting, fasting will do this. Fasting, fasting will point your life in the right direction. And fasting, it, it prepares you, watch this, it prepares you for a God answer. He says, your request has been heard in heaven, and I've come to what? Answer your prayers. So what does fasting do? Fasting do it points your life in the right direction, but fasting also it prepares your heart. It prepares your heart for God answers. 
So now he's prepared. This is why fasting and prayer is huge. It's so important. It shouldn't be a small part of your life. It should be a big part of your life. That's why every year we start off with, with a corporate fast and prayer. And so now, now he, he's praying, he's, it's pointing his life in the right direction. And how many of you guys know it's preparing his heart for a God answer, a God answer. And here's the last thing it does. How many of you guys, he said he humbled himself. Now this is the picture I see. I'm not saying we can prove this biblically, but get on your knees real quick, Chris. This is the picture I see. I, I really believe when you humble yourself, you lower yourself so he can be exalted. Are y'all hearing me? I, I see, and listen to me, I see, I see this. I love that Letitia got on her knees earlier during worship. I think sometimes, listen to me, we, we, we come in and we're just, we're, we're too dignified. No, we need to get rid of me and get all of him. And if it takes getting on your knees, you get on your knees. Can I get an amen? Why? Because it's, it's a symbolic of, Lord, I'm bowing down to you. I'm bowing down to you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And I really believe, I believe when he humbled himself, he lowered himself so, so, so God could be exalted and so he could hear from him. We should never think we're above God. Because the Bible says, apart from him, you can do no thing. You can do nothing. But in him, you can do all things. Are y'all hearing me? And so, and so this is what fasting does. Fasting does, it what points your life in the right direction. It prepares your heart for God answers. And it positions you. Watch. How many of you guys know he is now positioned for victory? When, when we fight battles, we should fight our battles on our knees. Are y'all hearing me? And if we fight our battles on our knees, I believe we're going to see more victories. Come on, it's good stuff right there. And it, it positioned him for victory. It positioned him for victory. Now, now he's positioned. He's positioned for victory. He's positioned for victory. Now, I, I want to share something with you. All because what? All because going back to point number one, what? This is a physical act of obedience. Physical act of obedience. And how many guys during that physical act of obedience got downloaded some things in him and strengthened him, encouraged him? Now he got some answers. And now, now listen to me, heaven spoke, an angel came, Gabriel came. Uh, most theologians believe it was Gabriel. Gabriel came and he speaks, and he speaks. An archangel, he comes and he speaks to Daniel. Now, well, now while, Daniel, while Daniel is ministering, ministering to, to, I mean, sorry, while Gabriel, the angel, is ministering to Daniel, he, he's got Michael, the archangel. Michael's a, a warring angel. Michael, the, uh, the warring angel, he's over there, and he's going to take care of business. So often, while God is giving you the answer, he's already taking care of it for the future. All you've got to do is keep yourself positioned. And if you will keep yourself positioned, God will take care of the obstacle, the problem that's in front of you. Come on, somebody. Make some noise up in here. And so he, he keeps himself positioned for victory, for victory, for victory. Come on, y'all give Chris a hand. Y'all give Chris a hand. Come on, come on. I got another illustration, but I'll save it. I'll save it. And so listen to me. What does it do? Prayer and fasting. Remember, it points your life in the right direction. It pulls you away from distractions. It prepares you for God answers. And how many guys do it positions you for a new season of victory? It does. It positions you for a new season of victory. Let me read it to you. Daniel 10, 13 to 14. I'm about to close. It says this, but for 21 days, but for one, 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom, that's an evil spirit of Persia, blocked my way. Then Michael, Michael, there he is. Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. He says, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I'm here to explain, to explain what will happen to your people in the future. For this vision concerns a time yet to come. This is powerful. Fasting your prayer will position you. How many guys know for a winning season? It's going to position you for a winning season. Now, I've got to close and I'm out of time, but I do want to say this one little last thought. Listen to me. I believe with all my heart the greatest reward, the greatest reward for fasting and prayer is not God changing your circumstances, but God changing you. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen? God changing you. God changing you. And I believe when God changes you, you will begin to see your circumstances change. Why? Because he's going, he's going to do a new thing. He's going to do a new thing. But the new thing he wants to do always starts with you. And how many guys know that's why I started out with this in this series? Because I believe God is a God who wants to, to give us new beginnings. But I also believe the new thing that he wants to do starts in you before you see it on the outside. Are y'all hearing me? 
He wants to do it on the inside before you see it on the outside. And when you begin to pray and fast, when you begin to pray and fast, you, you get so close to God that you know that there's no weapon formed against you that shall prosper. You know, you know when the enemy attacks that heaven's got your back. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Come on, are y'all hearing me? You, 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 you're so full of faith. You're so full of faith because you've been spending time with Jesus. That you say, mountain be removed. And the mountain moves. You're so full of faith. You're so full of faith that if God says to, to, to take your staff and, and hit the ground, the waters begin to part, you do what God says. You say, Lord, I'm going to fast and pray. I'm going to do a physical act of obedience. When I obey God, God will bless and he'll cause the waters to part. And when the waters part, I'm going to cross over and step into a new season. I'm going to step into a new beginning and the new things that God has in store for my life. Church, I believe listen to me, this is our year. This is my year, listen to me, to see new beginnings and new things that God has in store for me come to pass. How many of y'all believe that it's a new year, it's a new season for new beginnings? Amen, I'm done. Come on, did y'all receive this morning? Can I get an amen? I said, did y'all receive this morning? Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 God is so good, so good ran out of time there but man i'm telling you it was well worth a little extra can i get an amen so appreciate it here's what i want to close with before we uh partake of the communion table i want to close with this and this is who i want to pray for and i should y'all go ahead and remove my pulpit at this time i i, I want i want to pray i want to pray uh specifically for these two things this is what god put on my heart and then we'll, we're going to partake of the communion table first thing is is this to me there's some of you, there's some of you that say, Pastor, uh, I need a fresh start. I need, I need a new beginning with Jesus. There's some of you, maybe, maybe you, 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 you're living more for you than you are for Jesus. I believe right now, this is your moment, this is your time to stop living for you and start living for him. And so for those of you who say, listen to me, I've never surrendered my life to Christ. Listen to me, when you surrender your life to Christ, listen to me, that's a new beginning. The Bible says we become a new creation. And he makes all things new inside of each and every one of us. It's a new start. It's a new beginning with Jesus. So if you're in here and you say, Pastor, that's me. This is a new year and I want to do things right. And I want to start the new year off right. And I want to stop living me. I want to live for him. And I want to surrender my all to him. Not, not part of me, but I want to give him all of me. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Can I, can I see your hand? You say, that's me, Pastor. That's me. I'm going to ask I'm, all those people to lift your hand. I'm, I'm going to make, I'm going to have, this is a new year. And it's, this, it's time to have a, a, a new faith and a new boldness. And I'm asking you to stand right where you're at. You say, that's me, Pastor, that's me. That's me. Now, here's the second thing I want to pray for. There's some of you in this room. You say, listen to me. I'm, I, I want, I want, listen to me. This is one of those years, Pastor. I truly want less of me and all of him. Less of me and all of him. I've, 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 I've given, I've, I haven't really given my all. And, 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 and you're in here, and you may be saved, you may be heaven bound, but you just, you just feel like you're not, you're not going full throttle. You're not giving them everything. You say, this is, 2019 is the year for it to be. Less of me and more of him. And, and how many guys know, if you want more of him, you've got to give him more of you. And so that's who I'm talking about. If that's you in here, you say, I have Jesus, but I want more of Jesus. And I'm going to do whatever it takes to position myself to have more of him in my life. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Can, can you just please stand? If you can stand, you can stand. You can stand right where you're at. You can stand where you're at. And I want to pray. I want to pray real quick. The first prayer, I want everybody in the room, everybody in the room to repeat after me as I lead these people in a prayer. Everybody repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord, today I come to surrender my life to you. Come into my life and make me new and help me to live for you every day in every way. Lord, I receive your love, your grace, and your forgiveness. I believe I'm heaven bound in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all give them a hand. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah.